Well, hello. Today's Passion Nerdly podcast is bringing you a special episode along with our partners at the Nerds Domain for a joint release for our shows, The Tome Travelers, as well as Go Fund This. In this episode, we are joined by Stentor Danielson, game designer, artist, and writer extraordinaire. Stentor worked with co-creator Cheyenne Grimes to create the game Laser Kittens and is now kickstarting an expansion called More Kittens that will be running through February 28th. So, Stentor, thank you so much for joining us here today. Well, thank you for having me. One of my favorite warm-up questions, as always, is asking game creators how they got into gaming. So I actually got into gaming kind of late as compared to uh, what I think a lot of people have in their backstory. Uh, It wasn't actually until I was about 30 years old, and I recently met Cheyenne Grimes, my co-designer on Laser Kittens, and they invited me over uh, to play some role-playing games with a group of their friends that we got together and did role playing uh, pretty regularly, and they were really into the story games. So we played a lot of Fiasco. Uh, we played some Ganakagak. Uh, we kept talking about how we were totally going to play the Shabalhiri Roach, although we somehow never actually got to that one, at least uh, on the nights that I was there. And so that's kind of how I got started with my gaming. It wasn't until many years later that I played any. Uh, quote-unquote trad games like uh, D&D. When it comes to role-playing games, I feel that there is a whole side to the community that people don't realize is there. Gamers seem to center on gather your party and go dungeon style games, but there really is so much more out there, such as Laser Kittens. If you had to give a gamer a tagline that sums up the experience or purpose of Laser Kittens, what would it be? So the purpose of Laser Kittens is to see the world from a kitten's point of view and to see all of the adventures that our ordinary world holds when you're a tiny kitten who's just learning how to be a cat. So a lot of the game focuses on taking things that might seem like nothing to us as humans and turning them into major mysteries, major challenges from the point of view of a little kitten. Like going down the stairs is a huge deal when you're a kitten. And uh, we have seen the kittens that we fostered when we have them in an upstairs room. And the first time they actually make it all the way downstairs is uh, a really big deal. And it's a really big accomplishment for them. And People are always doing stuff that I'm sure from a cat's point of view is just weird and inexplicable. And so from playing laser kittens, you're kind of looking at that human stuff from the the kitten point of view and trying to figure out what would a, a cat make of all of this weird stuff that people are doing? What would they understand about their world from that point of view? What was your inspiration for the game Laser Kittens? So the inspiration, I kind of started to mention that last answer there, is that Cheyenne and I have fostered kittens for our local Humane Society for many years. So when people bring kittens into the animal shelter, whether they're unwanted kittens that someone's pet had or they're ones that they found outside that had been born on the street or whatever it is, they bring them in and the shelter doesn't want to just keep the kittens like in a cage because they won't get properly socialized, they weren't won't learn how to be a cat. They also won't learn how to be around people and learn to be a good pet for somebody when they finally go up for adoption. So they have a network of foster families and uh, they'll put out you know, an email. Usually we get the lists, the kittens that are available for fostering. And so then we take them in usually you know, a few weeks to a month or so uh, and 
so they can get a lot of direct attention from people. We can make sure that they're growing up healthy, that they're getting fed, that they're learning to use the litter box, all those kind of things. Uh, and then once they're big enough that they can get all their shots or their medical attention that they need and then go up for uh, adoption to their forever homes, then we take them back to the shelter. Uh, and often they'll turn us right back around with a new litter of kittens to foster if it's kind of at the height of kitten season when they've got a lot a lot of kittens at the shelters. Are there other game creators and writers out there that influenced you or inspired you the creation of this game? So the there's a lot of a lot of people we could cite as uh, as inspirations, um, and I'd feel bad for obviously leaving people out if I try to remember them all right now. I think some of the biggest inspirations for us have been number one, obviously Fiasco, which was the first game that. I played and have played a lot of and you know it gives you that attitude of wanting to see things get real wacky uh in the game and then of course the the GMless uh system that Fiasco uses and Laser Kittens is also a GMless game. Uh another thing that I'd cite as inspiration is not any one particular game but just the uh, the games in general that get made in the Game Chef competition. So Cheyenne and I have both been involved in one way or another with Game Chef for uh, quite a few years. I ended up becoming the global coordinator for Game Chef this last year, uh, and I'll be doing that again next year. And so the there's a huge number of really different games that get produced for Game Chef. People do a lot of really interesting experimental things when you're given this theme and ingredients and uh, you know nine days to make it happen. And there's just a lot of really creative and cool stuff that comes out of there. And so I've picked up a lot of ideas here and there from all the different Game Chef games that I've that I've read over the course of being involved with that competition. Fun question. I always feel that as game creators, we often make games that we ourselves would want to play. If you could be anyone or anything in this world or genre you've created, who or what would it be? So I think the obvious answer there uh, is a kitten uh, in the world of laser kittens. Uh, I think it would be it would be just really cool to, as I've said, see the world from that point of view uh, to kind of learn what it's like to be a cat, to have someone else clean your poop out of the litter box um, and, you know, feed you and uh, ensure that all of your, your needs are met. I think that'd be pretty cool. Um, and with the More Kittens Kickstarter that we're doing, we're expanding beyond just kittens. So we have adventure scenarios uh, for kittens in various kinds of circumstances, like kittens in space, kittens at an archaeological dig, kittens in ancient Egypt, uh, a bunch of stuff like that. But we're also producing some hacks of the game that are not about kittens, but use the same basic rule set. Uh, and so one I'll, I'll call out that I think would be really cool to to be part of that world is one by Brebo Sheldon, which is about octopuses that have been brought into a wildlife rehab center. And I, I think being an octopus would be uh, would be pretty cool. They're, they're really interesting animals. Uh, they are uh, way smarter than people realize uh, and just have a very different life from humans, just from being aquatic, being invertebrates, all that kind of stuff. So I think that'd be uh, that'd be pretty cool. And then another hack that we've got that would be uh, interesting to live out is one that I'm doing called Trash Friends that's all about animals that eat garbage. So you're a motley crew of different garbage-eating animals like opossums and raccoons and bears and ibises and stuff like that. And you know, that'd be kind of an interesting life as well to roam around the city looking for the hottest trash uh, to break into and dine upon until the humans come to chase you away. Almost every RPG has some form of deciding chance or risk. For your game, you've centered upon two decks of playing cards. What inspired you to take the game this direction? So the playing card thing really arose out of trying to make the laser mechanic work. So in Laser Kittens, the, the premise is that 
every cat has a laser, which is kind of a superpower that the cat has. And I always describe it as if you see a cat and its eyes are kind of glowing, sometimes that's the power of its laser that it's using. And in the game, every kitten has their own unique laser power. But the thing about your laser is that when you're a tiny kitten, you're just a little bundle of energy and you can't quite control it. So kittens are just learning how to how to be in the world. And so they're always running around, bumping into things, falling off of things, getting stuck because they forget how to retract their claws, all this kind of stuff. And so we wanted to really replicate that. And you know, we didn't want it just to be, oh, and also you have the superpower that you can do sometimes. Um, we wanted it to be this thing where like, just the, the energy of doing this would just build up into you until you couldn't hold it back anymore, and then your laser would go off, but it could just as easily do something counterproductive as it could do something that would be you know, beneficial to you. And we actually started out trying to make this work as a dice mechanic and just couldn't get it to work with dice. Uh, but then once we turned to cards and said, okay, well, you've got these five cards that represent your laser, and you flip them over as you go through scenes, and you can add new cards into it based on what happens to you, suddenly it all just kind of came together. That It was so much easier to replicate that kind of experience of what the laser power is like for the kittens when you're using cards than when you're using dice. Uh, and so then once we've got the cards on the table, then you might as well you know, just make it all fit together by using the cards for all of the mechanics that you've got going on. And then once we had made that decision, we realized that also created the opportunity to create custom cards and to put kitten art on those cards. So for the original Kickstarter, uh, we had some just brilliant kitten art uh, by Rory that I just, I sometimes just get out the cards and just sit there and look through them because the art is so great. And so then when we decided to do this second Kickstarter, one of the things that we really wanted to do was to produce a new set of cards with all new art and we spent a lot of time looking for the right artist we wanted somebody that would have really great art that you know every every card would be something that you know you just want to you just want to hug that kitten that's on that card uh, but we also wanted to be different from Rory's style and we wanted something that would be very distinctive so that people that had the first set of cards would still want to get the new set of cards because you know it'd be it'd be so different and we uh, ran across I think just through a a Twitter hashtag, uh, we came across Dominique Ramsey, uh, who did the art for those. You can see some of the samples on our Kickstarter page. And I think that we we found kind of the perfect artist for what we wanted to do in terms of making cards that are amazing and also really distinct from the first round of cards. Your original Kickstarter was the development and creation of the game Laser Kittens. Now you've launched a new Kickstarter for decks of cards as well as some great new scenarios. What can you tell us about the new campaign? Yeah, so the new campaign, I, I've kind of alluded to this. There are kind of two things that we're creating with this new campaign. So one is the new set of cards. So you can get, uh, you can back and just get a single deck of those cards. If you're not interested in the Laser Kittens game, uh, and you just want to get a set of cards that you can play poker or go fish or whatever else with, because it is a standard 52 cards uh, deck. You can just back and just get a deck of cards. Uh, you can get two decks of cards, which is what you'd need to play the actual Laser Kittens game. And then we're also producing a book called More Kittens that's a bunch of hacks and expansions for the base Laser Kittens game. So we've got some ideas for other ways to play the game, such as a, a two-player or uh, ideas for playing online, because when we originally designed it, it was just before online role-playing really took off. And I've been doing a lot of online play uh, with the Gauntlet community, which has been great, but it's also made me realize that Laser Kittens as written is a little hard to translate to online. So we're going to have a, a chapter about how you can play online. 
uh, then we have a bunch of scenarios. So these are pregens, basically, that give you a, a setup to work with. And so I've mentioned some of those already. We have one of kittens in space. We have one about Viking kittens. We have a Halloween scenario. We have an ancient Egypt scenario. Uh, and as a, uh, a stretch goal, we then have the same writer is going to write a modern Egypt scenario. It's kind of, you know, bookends to history uh, in that particular place. We've got a scenario about kittens learning to be witches familiars. Um, we've got one about uh, kittens in an archaeological dig. So a whole bunch of these kind of pre-gen scenarios. And then we've got the hacks of the game, which are uh, taking the same basic rule set, but making it about something other than kittens. So I've mentioned the octopus game. There is uh, the trash friends that I mentioned is a, a hack. It uses the same basic rule set. Uh, we've one, got one by Allison Tam that's about dragons. We've got one by Maisha Elenai that's about puppies uh, and several others uh, that we're putting together. So using the same basic rule set, but doing something other than kittens. And then we've also got a few kind of small bonus games. And so the one that I'm most excited about is one called Mayor Cat, where the incumbent mayor of your city is corrupt and incompetent. And so you have joined the campaign of the only candidate that can defeat them, who is a cat. And so you play through this game as the human staffers trying to get this cat elected as mayor. So you're releasing attack ads and trying to get endorsements from celebrities. And there's a debate section where uh, you put in some questions that the candidates get asked and the cat can only answer it in meows. Uh, and then at the end, you have your standing in the polls that goes up and down through the game. And you, uh, based on the standing in your polls, you... Uh, determine whether the the cat or the incumbent mayor wins the election. So there's a whole bunch of different cool stuff in the More Kittens book. And of course, uh, depending on the tier that you pick on Kickstarter, if you don't already have the original Laser Kittens core book, you can pick that up as well. You're also working alongside or bringing on some other indie game creators for additional content. What has it been like bringing others on board and who's joining you? Yeah, it's been really fun bringing on a lot more people to work with. Uh, so in our original Kickstarter, you know, we had Cynthia Lee, who was our artist. We had uh, Colleen Riley doing the editing for it. Uh, and you know, myself and Cheyenne, we had Rory doing the art for the cards, but it was a fairly small team of people working together. Whereas for this project, we've got a, a huge number of people. And it's just been really cool hearing their ideas and wanting to help them make it a reality because we put out this call for writers and we were just kind of blown away by the number of people that uh, responded to that and the different ideas that they had about what you could do with the laser kittens system. People came up with stuff that we never would have thought of on our own. And so it's just been really cool uh, getting to to work with those people, figuring out how to pull all this stuff together. Uh, it's definitely been more work than when we just write the whole book ourselves, but it's also been really kind of gratifying that other people saw what we did with the original game and said, that looks really cool. I want to be part of that. I want to contribute to that uh, in some way. So shameless plug time. If our listeners wanted to get in on your Kickstarter or wanted to find other projects you're involved in, where would they go? So you can follow our company on either Twitter or Facebook. We're at Play Glitter Cats. Uh, you can also follow me on Twitter. I'm at Chef Stentor. And if you go to any of those places, you'll find plenty of links to our Kickstarter so that you can back that. Uh, you can also just search on Kickstarter for more kittens and it should pop up. And so uh, we'd, we'd love to see you all as backers and try to get this game into as many different hands as possible. And thanks again for joining us. We look forward to seeing how the Kickstarter turns out. Yeah, well, thank you again for having me here. 
This podcast is produced by Passion Nerdly in association with the Nerds Domain and our parent network, the Southgate Media Group. This podcast could not exist without their support or from support by Patreons like you. For more information on how you can get involved, visit passionnerdly.com. This has been a production of the Southgate Media Group. For more podcasts like this one, head over to southgatemediagroup.com. Podcast presents the Tome Travelers. <laughs>